blessing today, and we're gonna open with the icebreaker. Um, so I still haven't decided it, but I guess I will now. Um, okay. <laughs> How'd you not already have an icebreaker? Um, then again. Because I've been running through like 50 I, I different did. ideas. Um, would you rather be able to fly or run fast or um, run very, very fast? Ooh, solid one. That's not like... When you say run very, very fast, does that mean I can run very, very fast for a long time? Um, Ooh. you have to build up stamina. Same with flying. It would, it, flying so it's not and, like the flash? It's no, not like... you're like... <laughs> No, you're like okay. 100 miles an hour top speed, but like That's... flying, you get flying, you get about 50 miles per hour. I'll definitely. But nonstop but... though. No, 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 no. Boat takes stamina. Was... So I'm limited on my flight time. Yeah. So what... and on my speed time. Yeah. That's not this how... Is, this is how the real world works. Right? This is <laughs> how the real world works. How long does? With your with your arms, you'd be holding up all of your body weight. So... That's true. Well, well, like that would be very easy. Actually, no, 70. How about 70 for flight? 70 miles per hour. I'll still take speed. How long does it, the stamina last? Depending on how your strength training. You could make, it could last like two seconds. Wait, so like Air. a really big human being is not going to be able to run that far? Well, yeah. But if well, you're like, uh, but, but if you build but a really, in your leg. But a really it. tiny human will be able to fly much farther than me? Well, it just depends on it, how much they have in um, strength it's in the legs. Very deep icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man. There is a lot of rules to that. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> Josh threw out a lot of rules in the icebreaker. I mean, this is how this is probably how it would work. I, I mean, mean yeah, I running don't... fast is good. Like, how how long can you sprint at top speed normally? Not very far. Yeah. How far? We're going off of oh, that. no, not very far at all. Yeah, no. Before I'm most definitely not a sprinter. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I could do long distance. Day. I have done that. How long of a distance? I've done two half marathons. So that's 13.1 twice. Which in is pretty row. cool. No, not in a <laughs> row. So. That would be a marathon, and I is not doing that. <laughs> Caleb and I used to be runners. Caleb and I did Run for God a long time ago. Yeah. Shout, shout out, really rad company. You should go check them out. Why don't we still do that? I don't know, but it really should be a thing because that was really a lot of fun. Yeah, because I, I did that think too. Our church stopped doing it when COVID. Your family. It was COVID. Our our church stopped doing it when your family moved in here. No, because it was there for the first two years. Oh. Our first, yeah, two years. Let's uh, blame two. it on COVID. COVID. Because it was COVID. COVID. That's that, that's probably what it was. I stopped doing it. Not blaming it on Josh's family. <laughs> there, there it was, was definitely not the Bransom's fault. Yeah. No. no, we did do it. We did do it, so it wasn't our fault. Okay. <laughs> I do remember that though. Yeah. Because your mom did it. Yeah, I remember mom did that. Every week, I. That's cool. I would be dragged there. Emily would be dragged there. I was never dragged there. I always drove. There's a the joke. All right, I'm gonna go. Oh man, my first instinct. Like, should I go first instinct? First instinct. Slow no, words. Just think about it. My f okay. Well, my first one was flight. Yeah. It'd be pretty sick. Just be like, oh, I'm just gonna go get something and just fly to go and get it and do Peter Pan style and just go and get it. But then on the other side, like, man, I'd love to go exercise and go run. Well, even that'd but, be pretty but sick. But flying would also exercise you as well. How? Am I paddling? Yeah. Too bad this isn't like a YouTube live. Where we're like, <laughs> you're can you guys see me dog paddle through the air? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're. It's not that. It probably be. Let's say it's similar to swimming. Let's say it's what? Similar to swimming. So it'd be like a full body exercise. I can swim pretty good, so I probably. Mm. And you're a runner now too. Yeah, you could do both. Right, let's go. I'm an athlete. Let's go. You're an athlete. Your athlete, three syllables. I don't know. You, you just—I don't even know if you know that, but you just quoted a movie that I love. Did I really? What's the movie? Can I say it? Yep. I don't care. Bench warmers. Athlete. He's like, yeah. I didn't really I'll point you over to the cash register, or should I say, register, or because they're making fun of a dude because <laughs> he said athlete. Oh like, yeah. 
Catholic has three syllables. The registers are three syllables. That's as stupid. That's as stupid as um Shakespeare's banished. What? Um, <laughs> Henceforth, yeah. you shall enlighten us with your word. So um, what? Her, in Shakespearean stuff, they Banished. had that they had to have a certain amount of Banished. syllables per thing. And to fill in syllables, they just add syllables to words for no reason. And banish ed was one of them. And that word would be what, Caleb? Banished. Okay. <laughs> banished originally, and they turned it into banished ed. Yeah. That's um, very ridiculous. I don't like it. It was Caleb started translating. It was part of <laughs> trying to um... Movement Monday, a Caleb translation podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was a lot of. Uh... Poetic stuff in Shakespeare's plays, and they wanted to get it to. He tried to give every line a certain rhythm and a rhyme scheme, so Sweet. that's kind of what was going on with the uh, Banish Ed <laughs> and other things like that. Okay, so Kurt, answer the question. <laughs> I don't. We haven't gotten to that. We should do that. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go running. Why? Because I can. It's faster. Because it's faster, and I feel like I would but, but, be healthier than flying through the air. So. But wouldn't flying be more convenient? Flying's way more convenient, but when it comes to. I don't know. I feel like if I flew, I'd throw up a lot. Because <laughs> now we're starting all, to think. Like, you know, a lot high in the air. Where if it stops you, you know, there's nothing you can do. How high can you go, yeah, rule, high, Josh? Yeah, is there a limit on how high? Yeah, you already gave us rules. Yeah, like, oh, you can only go. It depends on how fat you are and how <laughs> skinny you are. No, it, it just and what's your yeah? What's your BPM? It depends. It, no, it doesn't depend on anything. <laughs> you can go as high as you want, but like, still stuff like GeForce and that stuff would apply. So like, how? Yeah, and I mean, just until you run out of energy. Yeah, or, and or then you're, one of the then you're dead? dead. When you run out, do no. you just do you glide you down or do you your arms completely out just glide. fall? Yeah, glide down. Okay, it's, well it's, that does sound like kind of fun, but the drop feeling, you know, if you can yeah, drop Kurt, feeling Kurt don't drop. Much. No, you no, you don't drop. Like no, I don't, I don't, just, you don't drop. Oh, dude, I love roller coasters. I love airplanes. I don't drop though. I don't like the roller coaster. You do, but I'm in a cart. No, no, I mean that's totally different. If I can drop and I'm and I'm I'm in something, I don't like the sensation of just like sitting there. Like on like those tower things, and then like, okay. Tower of Terror, Disney, and you drop. Like that's fun, but I don't like sitting there anticipating when to drop. I don't like that feeling. I don't like sitting on a countertop, and like someone comes by and like pushes me. Oh well, uh, no. That like I don't, I got like a yeah. sick fear of I falling just off that. I want to point out that Kurt would not like the Tower of Terror if the Disney stamp wasn't on it. False. It's fun. We should have a you. And it's also or? inside. Kurt, we should have a six, more we themed. We should have a you either it's Dollywood fun. or Six Flags Trip one day. Dollywood, going Kurt. in November. <laughs> Kurt. It's already planned, dog. Kurt, you wouldn't just we're fall. Going. I'll tell you down. post-show when we're going. Kurt, I do not do drop so, towers. So though. there's no creepies coming after us, and they're going to hang out with us at no randos hanging out. I don't do drop towers. Dollywood. Kurt, the only thing you have to That's worry crazy. about for do- for die would be running into something when you're at max speed without paying attention to it. And that would apply to both of them. You, you I'm still gonna say running. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. Just gonna I'm drop. still going running because down. it's just. I don't know about the whole glide thing then. Cause how am I gliding? Like, it's weird. I'm okay. skydiving with no parachute. Moving on. Who else has got it? Nathan. Exactly. Flying. <laughs> <laughs> what? I would go flying. Yeah. Okay, flying. I think I would fly, cause, like, if you're in traffic. That worked. <laughs> You're in the middle of the car. You just leave your car there? Yeah. <laughs> There's people in it. You live directly across from the school. <laughs> what do you mean, traffic? We're like, Dude, we go anywhere else. <laughs> That's okay, fine. That makes sense. Okay. You're... D- I'm definitely... You're a sandwich. You're, you're the meat in between the two schools. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving where you live. Also, you need to have a... You could just go out the window. Feels like trying that while it's moving. NASCAR style. You're in traffic. Yeah, it's it's not moving. I got stuck. I got stuck in traffic today. Is ridiculous. <laughs> or you could just open the door and jump out. Fast and Furious style. 
<laughs> Life is a movie. I'm it's definitely not. running. Tom Cruise. Oh, fine. Yeah, or, yeah, Tom Why? Cruise. Why? Just because you're faster, it's running, you know, you like teleporting kind of. Ooh, all you're right. Not all right. It's 100 miles per hour. You're not teleporting. Exactly. Uh, Frick, that's dude, that's fast. probably the closest we could get to teleporting outside of Scripture, which you should have Caleb tell that story if there actually is a story in the Bible where a guy teleports. Sick. Go, Caleb. Go. Read the book of Acts. Philip teleports. How? Can you explain to God. Can you explain How? What happened? This is the he best teleported. segue uh-huh. into the Bible. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Like, watch Caleb. Because we talked about it one night, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> Philip teleports. Like, what? It's like, yeah, he went from here to here. I'm like, a what? Sure and then you read just, it. just, like, not include the travel time? Dude. Nothing is impossible for God. I know. So, that would be sick. God spoke it. It happened to Philip. Homie was in one place, and homie was in another place. Homie was in another place. I came to find out that that was actually one of two impossible things that happened in that story. Um, I want to chew into the mic. Um, Gracias. So. The story, if there is a, uh, I think it's a Greek guy, I I forget, but there's someone riding on a a carriage. They're not Jewish, but they are reading scripture. They're reading Isaiah, and he doesn't understand what he's reading. But, you know, Philip happens along this guy, and he asks him, like, Hey, do you know what that means? Do you know what you're reading? And the guy's like, uh, well, no, nobody has taught me what this is supposed to mean, so I don't, I don't understand the book of Isaiah, or the scroll at that point. Um, so Philip teaches the guy about how Isaiah points to Jesus, about his prophecies and all that. Well, I came to find out that somebody taught me that they were actually in the middle of a desert and Philip was like, hey, there's water over here. You can let's baptize you. Or um, you know, do you want to get baptized? And yeah, I was like, Yeah, I want to get baptized. So Philip immerses the guy, he dunks him, because that's what baptism actually translates to. But as the guy was under, Philip disappeared. <laughs> All right, here's what we see. This is Acts chapter 8. Caleb just did this, and it's super awesome. You always say, here's what we see whenever you're about to read Scripture. What? I want you to, I want you to see this. <laughs> I want you to hear this with your eyes. All right? <laughs> Fine. With your eyes. Here. <laughs> Zip it. Anyways, <laughs> um, he ordered the carriage. He's talking, and this is with. Uh, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Is with a eunuch. Um, oh yeah. There's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water. And Philip baptized him. When he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit snatched him away, aka teleported him away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Super rad. Now Did check this out. That question where well, the heck he went? Meanwhile, hold on, man, don't jump. Meanwhile, <laughs> don't go teleporting. <laughs> Philip found himself farther north at another town, like uh, Az- Azotus. He preached the good news there and in, uh, in every town along the way until he reached Caesarea. So, Holy Spirit snatched him away, which went, you are here and... <laughs> found himself up north. Nothing is impossible with God. There we go. So check it out. There it is. All right. There was no... All right. This is probably a great segue into... Um, epi- from. Well, this is episode nine, by the way. Dude, we're one away. Ooh, this is episode right. nine from almost being two handfuls of the pod. Uh, Episode 8, if you have listened, 
or if you saw in there, it was part one. Uh, when we talked about waiting and being that there is a part one, there's going to be a part two, and that's what we're jumping into tonight. Um, we're back doing a dude pod, which is super awesome. It's Titanic part two. <laughs> Go listen to part one. It's fun. Uh, we had our boy Ryan on there. Shout out, Ryan. Um, but we talked about... Titanic part two and part three. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting. <laughs> that maybe got hurt. I don't know. I, I, I don't care. <laughs> Um, but looking, <laughs> how do I transition from that? <laughs> um, we talked about waiting and for our guys that weren't here a couple weeks ago, we talked about the, the good things we can find when we're waiting, like almost the reward side of waiting when, it, when it's really cool. Um, and the patience that comes along with it, but then the struggle of waiting at the exact same time. So transitioning from Philip didn't have to wait. God teleported him to another region. There was no waiting. He did what needed to be done. And you. Yeah, you, you shall not wait, Philip. Bye. Pew. And I wonder if it made a cool sound. Let's say it did. It just went. It either went or it went. Yeah, it did a wow. <laughs> Maybe it, Epic I mean, bass slide. I, thought, I, I figured it'd be pretty cool if it didn't make any noise. But there was no sound user. You just heard. You just heard. Yeah, you gotta imagine <laughs> what that was like for Philip. Okay, this is really funny. You know, I saw this video the other day, and then we're gonna talk scripture. Or we're gonna talk about waiting. But when somebody picks up a snail, you know how slow snails are, and like they they're just like thinking they're going, they're just moving right along. And like when a kid picks up a snail and moves them somewhere else, it looks like they're going through light speed. Like, <laughs> yeah! and they're like they move like from here to here, <laughs> they move like a foot, and that just blew that snail's mind. And like, no! <laughs> just, just let's just say that was Pete, that was that was Philip. He went from one place, I'm like, all right, baptizing this guy, cool deal. <laughs> No, Here I, I, I am. I think that, I think <laughs> and he that, went right into it. That, I think the snail was embracing its turbo. Remember that movie? Right? That's what it had to be. <laughs> Either that, like, he just fully embraced it and liked it, or it just freaked the freak out of him, and that's what we went. But, Jacob, when it comes to waiting, how do you, how do you deal with it? Now, looking at it from two-part question here. From a... Like life side, like how are you with waiting, but then in your relationship with God or relationship with other people, like family waiting, you know, other relationship. So first one, let's just say like life, how do you deal with waiting in life and in relationships and then your relationship with God? I mean, it all depends in my opinion, it all depends on what I'm waiting for. There you go. If I'm waiting for something bad to happen, you know, it'd be like, I don't want to wait for something bad to happen because it gives me anxiety sometimes. There you so go. I want to just, you know, get it out of the way. But, you know, I also value, like, living in the moment, you know, like. Sweet. I don't worry. I don't think about the past, you know. I'm here and, you know, that's all that matters for now. So I living in the moment I'm down you know my mind is always it's God is definitely one of the main components of what I think about um, depending on how old I am I mean it's gonna be nothing eventually my you know my earth life isn't gonna be it's gonna be nothing by the time I'm in heaven you know because I mean eternity 80 years you can't compare this true so what talk about like we can't compare to you know all the stuff we're going through right now to like the joys of heaven like what's going you know what's what is to come you know our present suffering won't compare to the greatness that god has in store for us so i think it's a great thing like 
wherever you are waiting, you're in the moment anyways. And then there is that reward. On episode eight, Josh brought up a great point. It was super awesome. And I ended up talking to his dad about it. I'm like, man, Josh like dropped some knowledge bombs, which is really good. He's like, it's like, I'm okay with the, with waiting if the reward is worth it. It's like when it comes to, and we talked about food, and it was a great parallel to like, hey, if I'm waiting and I, and, and I don't have my food yet, but then I finally, I wait for a long time and then I get my food and it's bomb, then it was worth the wait. Exactly. The reward outweighs my waiting. So when it comes to, and that can be in life, but then when we look at it in our relationship with God, in our waiting period, we're not wasting time. We continue to live, because scripture tells us those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. So in those moments, we can be strong. God tells us to be, uh, to be courageous while we wait on the Lord. In that waiting period, we can continue to grow. We can find patience. We can you know, work through some other stuff because we know that there's a reward on the other side, even though we can't see it. And that's where faith steps in. So Josh brought up this great, again, this is the great point of going, man, I can wait when I know the reward's going to be super awesome. And it was like, dude, solid point. And, and again, why we, why we wanted to do a part two was because we, uh, kind of our post show, Caleb and Ryan and I were talking and, and just had a deeper conversation of going, man, this is super great. This was, and we talked more personal stuff and um, with some stuff that doesn't need to be in the pot. It just, that it's, um, it's personal to us and doesn't need to be for everybody. Um, but it was some stuff, just even relational things that it's hard to compare your life to somebody else when somebody else is in like a different stage. Like, oh, I want what they have. But in those waiting periods, God's working on you you're growing in that. There's so much, um, so much good stuff that is that's going to take place. Um, even like I think we talked about it in episode eight was God's preparing our hearts. Oftentimes, you know, we want it now. We are the now, now generation. Like, oh man, we got this. I can have this now. I can have it my way. I can do it all, and I can have it in two seconds. You know, we were talking about a sandwich place that makes really fast sandwiches extremely fast that's what they're known for like man you ask for it it's on the other side they're just notorious for fast making sandwiches and that's that's great and we 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 like that now we don't like waiting for things but there there's some good stuff that can take place relationally in our lives when we're you know we're you know we're waiting for the next stage of life, you know, whether, you know, for us older guys, um, you know, I married in, in October, we'll celebrate 11 years of marriage, but also waiting in that period for that relationship to begin, waiting to get married. Uh, my wife and I got married two years after we got, uh, we started dating and, and grew together and then, you know, waited to have kids and then, I mean, even just like we, we live so much in the moment, uh, a fun thing today in, in, in my house was we have eight chickens and we got one egg today. We have been waiting for months on a stinking egg and we got one today and I'm so pumped like, yeah, they can do it. You did it girls. Good job. So now we've got one and we're having breakfast for dinner tomorrow. So hopefully tomorrow I'll have more eggs and we're going to eat those eggs and I'm fired up about it. But that all being said, there is a reward on the other side of waiting. So living in the moment, not wasting your time, just sitting there going, well, I'll just, I guess I'll just wait. No, there's, there's more living to be done while you wait. So I like what you said. I mean, there's always, I mean, you, you're never not doing anything. I mean, you're, you're always doing something. I, I agree. I, I like the never not. You're never not doing anything. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Yeah. I like double negatives. I don't care. <laughs> double negatives equals positive. Hey Amen. I like the multiplying wise. Two negatives might 
um, addition or subtraction, that's just more negatives. Two negatives? Yeah. If you got negative six minus negative three is negative six plus three. Yeah, that's negative three. Yeah, but, you know, if you're taking it away, you, you know, you might be getting something. I don't know. I'm waiting for my brain to catch up with your math. Uh, uh, honestly, <laughs> I'm tired. It's a Monday. You know what? Okay, math is the thing I could do half asleep. ELA, I cannot do even fully awake. I hate it so much. Like, why is my teacher making us write an essay on the second week of school? Because you're in school, man. That's your job. Hey, we the had to write one on the first week, week of school. Yeah. I don't want to hear from my understanding. <laughs> well, I'm not, but... I was going to say I don't write essays anymore, but actually I do. Yeah, no, that. You, We've been doing write speech essays I write since speech the second day of school. Hmm? We've been doing prep for this essay since the second day of school. Okay. Nathan, you stepped away from the pod for a second. We had to wait for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, did, we did not say anything while you were gone. We did. No, we did not. We just we transitioned. We were just how, how we, are it was just awkward silence for the pod. Yeah, it was just like 10 minutes of just like, well, I guess he's coming back. Where'd you get two straws? You have another straw in your pocket? You, going, you, got, you went through three Capri Suns tonight? There's Maybe. No, I don't want to drink a soda and there's no water. So. Uh, I'll drink a Capri Sun instead. It's basically water. Drink like good. eight. All right. Then how do you deal with waiting? Personally, relationally, and then with God. How do you how do you deal with it? I just tell myself that I know that it's coming soon and there's no reason to rush it when you can do so much more stuff while weighing on that and like get more done while also weighing on something else there you go i agree i like it there's no again there's no sense of wasting wasting time and we talked about it with i think we talked about it like dr seuss wrote a book called the waiting game or the the waiting place sorry uh, and we actually did a sermon series on it and all this stuff and like we're all in a waiting place whether we look at it or not and then also in that waiting place what are we doing while we're waiting are we worrying about what's coming here's a great segue are we worrying about what is to come or are we in a state of worship to god in anticipation of what's he going to do um i kind of had like a <clears throat> slight not anxiety attack, but I kind of have one because I, I run the, well, I manage the tech team here at our church, and this is essentially a tech team pod. It's pretty awesome. Juicy J. Jacob could help out if you want. You could. You could, you could rock it. It'd be good. But yesterday, um, if you guys heard Emily on the pod, uh, she is now in college. Uh, so and she ran our soundboard yesterday. Josh ran our soundboard, did a cracking good job, super awesome. He's going to continue to help out, and it was really awesome. It was not a cracking good job. It was a – dude, did anything go wrong? <sighs> no, so it was no. cracking good job. Everything but looked good. Everything felt like it was wrong. It was good like a cracking. It was good like a Krakens cracking. Krakens are rad. Massive octopus that ate Jack Sparrow. Giant. <laughs> oh, cracker. Yeah, sucking out. Octopus. <laughs> That's I right. think you said cracker. I think you meant like a su su uh, saltine. Yes, it's exactly <laughs> what I meant. Saltine, <laughs> <Just> saltine. <laughs> uh, but I had a freak out moment waiting for the service as I was on my way here and waiting for that and going, man, I hope everything goes good, all the stuff. and. And on the other side, I found myself being like, it will be fine. We're going to worship. Things are going to be good. There should, this is a well-oiled machine. There's nothing for me to worry about. So many times in our waiting game, we, we worry instead of worship. So being in a state of worship changes everything. Whether we're doing something, you know, whether serving in a church or, or playing soccer or doing whatever, to, to occupy our waiting time, and we're giving God praise for that, and we're, we're in community, we're in relationships with people, and, and having fun, and, and doing life. Um, 
instead of just sitting around going, man, I hope this, I hope this comes, you know, I hope this happens. I, I don't know what's taking so long. You know, my package was supposed to be here yesterday. What's going on? You know, all sorts of stuff. I'm going to wait. I'm going to tell this story and Caleb's going to crack on me. But I ordered jeans like back in May and they ended up coming like the end of June. Um, and Caleb, <laughs> he was like, well, maybe if you wore different style pants, they would have shown up earlier. It's like, that's not what it was. They were back ordered and that's, that's all it was. And that's, that's, but I had to wait and I waited and, and can just threw all my frustrations out you know where i was telling my kids like i just want my pants to come i've got two pair of pants i've waited for like a month and a half and my <laughs> boys every time we got a package like dad are these your pants no so instead of being that like if i would have been like eventually they're gonna come it'll be fine teachable moment for me from dad to sons but instead i chose to be like no they're not here i don't understand and there's that i feel that. like there's some different levels if it's like Six dollar pants, that's fine. Um, if 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 you're like a hundred, if you're a thousand dollar computer is getting is late, uh, uh, I'd be a little more worried. How'd you know the price of my pants? That's weird. What? How'd you know the price of my pants? That's I weird. just guessed. Actually, they weren't sixty. Two hundred? No way, <laughs> dude. Thirty-six. Yeah. I think they're forty bucks. Anyway. Okay. But I, waiting I for close. waiting for something like that. I'll give you. It's true. But. Anyway, we look at it, we struggle in the waiting. Um, and again, like waiting in relationships, waiting on, you know, waiting on God to move. Um, you know, I'm waiting on God to move on some family members in my life. And I know he's going to do it one day, and I'm just going to remain faithful that he's going to do it. And it's not up to my time clock. I've asked God to remove myself out of it, other than to pray for my family member and for him to, for God to move in their life and to change their heart, to change their perspective, change their whole mindset, completely radic radically change their life. But I've had to remove my time frame because my time frame doesn't matter. My job is to be faithful and to pray and to know that He's going to do something. And. That's what I'm. Go that's what I'm going after, um, and all I'm going to do is is praise God when it actually does happen, because I'm believing wholeheartedly that God's going to do it one day, and I'm going to lose my mind and I'm going to cry and do all this stuff. But it's it's going to be awesome. But in those times, we we wait um, while I'm you know I'm going to worship while I wait. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to live life. We're going to party. All the fun. This is from Josh's mic. This is fun. Josh is stepping away from the pod for a second. It's going to be good. Hey, you get your own microphone. How do you feel about yourself? Proud. Proud? It's about time. You've only asked for like six years. That's of, it. Of this three-month podcast. <laughs> I've wanted to have my own microphone for the past six years. It's been... Asking for 102 years. 102 years. And, and today, and today it happened. about 36 years. <laughs> yeah. He's asked my entire life. Hey, he's the oldest one in this room. If you go Nathaniel, yeah. we just give you the biblical name and you just be set. Yeah. Which I'm the only one. <laughs> just figure this out. I'm the only one in this room on this pod now without a biblical name. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I'm sur I'm surrounded game. by Josh, Caleb, sound, Jacob, and sound Nathan. Of music. Kurt. I what? I am in Sound of Music. That's a great movie. I yep. <laughs> I play an Austrian blonde-headed kid who likes to eat. That's spot on me. Just minus the blonde hair. Minus and the, the minus, Austrian. Minus the hair. Minus the hair. There you go. It's fine. I just thought that. I was like, man, I'm sitting around. Although you're not you're not Nathaniel, but I call you Nathaniel, so we're just going to go with it. Yeah. And it's fun. The name Kurt would be cool here in the Bible. Would be cool. Yeah. Nathan was the prophet during David's reign. So there you go. Hey, man. So there you go. You got Old and New Testament. Look at you. You can be Nathaniel. 
Is the name change your full name? Is that your full name or is it, is it actually your thing? It's not your full name. Okay. It should be my thing. Legally change my name. You could. Mine's Curtis. And it's German, so it's not in the Bible. What this? So, there's that, and that's fun. Oh, man. Yeah, but that, that was the big thing on the pod tonight. Part two. It's kind of a shorter one tonight, but yeah. part two doesn't need to be. It was just a continuation of a conversation. Oh, that was fun. Continuation of a conversation that we had a couple of weeks ago that we weren't done talking about yet. And it's yeah. really cool. Um, Apologies for the lack of commentary. I, I just, I've had a bit of a week and I'm a little out of it. So. No need to apologize, man. This is what, it's fun. It's A OK. It's honesty on the pod. It's good. But it's always cool um, for a couple of our guys, well, well, three of our guys, back in school now. Our summer was really rad and had a great time. We kept the pod going through the summer, which was really fun too. I'm trying to think when we started. We're allowed to check back. But uh, if you have not already, Josh is going to make fun of me because I can't, I, I struggle with subscribe. I would say subscribe. I just kind of glance over the B. He's like, Kurt, it's subscribe. And I was like, okay, fine. So if you haven't already, check out Movement Monday podcast and subscribe like our channel listen to all eight episodes comment let us know what you think share this with your friends it's super awesome uh, we had a mom text me tonight like hey what's your what's the podcast called where can i find it so i sent it to her uh, we have a couple of our students that listen to it here in our ministry it's just fun so thanks for tuning in each week um my dudes, how can we be praying for another, for one another? If you guys have not listened to this, your first time listening, here's what's really fun about our pod. Josh is back. Um, that was a smooth that transition. That was a smooth transition. Man. Um, right there. There was no delay. No dead air. So if, you, if you're just checking this out, um, this is a youth ministry podcast, and at the very end of it, we always pray for one another. Or just lift up prayer requests. So big thing, if you need prayer, let us know in the comments how we can be praying for you, how we can reach out to you. Uh, God hears, God moves, God can do all things. Uh, nothing is impossible for God, and nothing is too crazy to talk to God about. He knows your heart. He knows where you are. If, you, if you're trying to play hide-and-go-seek with God, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to lose. God knows 100% where you are at all times, and... He's 100% available. He wants to be a part of your life. Um, and he wants to transform your life. He doesn't want to save you from the junk you're in to keep you in the junk that you're in. Um, I can fully testify to that, that God did not save me from the dark to keep me in the dark. God saved me from the dark to bring me to the light. Um, so, my dudes, how can we be praying for another? You can say marching band, it's cool. Yeah, marching band. Oh, what's yeah. your other huge event? What? Prom? What? You said a huge event. What's your big event? Purchase that? prom is not... It's marching band. Yeah. Oh, you said what? I yeah, don't, I never mind. First race cross country this cross country this week. First cross country match? Cross... Oh, yeah. First not cross. that easy to say. Cross country. Cross country. You have a cross country race. First one ever. Let's go. Let's go. So you're going from <laughs> Georgia to you're going from Georgia to Nevada. You going uh, across the country. Hee haw! I'm just kidding. That's a L O L. Right <laughs> yeah. So um, my first why would you Hawaii stop is, in Nevada? Why wouldn't you go to California? Just Hawaii. I, I just said a random state. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is like cross country, Georgia to Alabama. The next one over. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pinch of the country. Go all the way to Hawaii. Oh, I don't know, maybe if I can run Man, you got to hang out with Jesus more and you'll walk if on water. If I can water. run 100 miles per hour, I might be able to make it to Hawaii. If you could fly 70 miles per hour, you could easily make it to Hawaii. And well, I can probably back. run on water. 
I, I don't think yeah, 100 yeah, miles yeah, per yeah, hour yeah, is fast yeah. enough to run in water. I don't know, but it's my two feet, and I'm pretty buoyant. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boy, I don't know, man. I'm pretty fast, and I can, I can, I can float. Can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got marching band first ever. Yeah. Man, this is two for first ever marching. Sick. First ever cross country. First time today. I'm now. A, I'm. I'm actually now like a farmer. I actually have like chicken. I have, I've had chickens. And now, now, now they're, I'm like reaping the benefits of having chickens. So that's pretty rad. So I'm down. I have my first robotics meeting this year with today. Let's go. So back in robotics, the first meeting. All the first. Back with, man, I, can't, I don't want to say it on the pod, but back to your really awesome name of your robotics team. It's very cool. I like it. Holy. I'll make FCA. Hey, yeah. Wait, mm -hmm. FCA leadership team? Yeah. Let's go. That would be a rash. I love me some FCA. Do you leadership go to Disney? Uh, I don't what? know. Okay. Wait, what? Because leadership at my so. school before COVID happened, uh, they went to Disney every year. Ooh. Your um, FCA leadership team went to Disney? No, no, like leadership in general. Oh. Like I was like, mm -hmm. what in the world? Um, but That's impressive. Well, FCA leadership was started before that. Um, ah. But we need to have a... Possibly a youth Disney trip because I've never been. No, I, I feel like from what Kurt said, <laughs> Josh just Kurt destroyed said, I agree with him. Yeah. Um, All right. Josh. Did, the youth would ruin it. No. You said that, Kurt. You have said that. I have said that, and I am. I, would I am it. very I sorry. To say. I agree. You've I, said that several. I've said it. Yeah. Here's why. But let's can see. I can this I be can be I be really, this is probably gonna be a really good point. Can I be transparent yeah. on the pod? Here's why. I grew up going to Disney with my family. So I have a way of doing things in Disney and we strategically do stuff that is that's very type A, which is kind of different. I'm only type A at Disney and at airports. So we do things differently and, and we go different we go different spots. So different. trying to coordinate everyone to do the things that the way that I do it the way that my memories are would be a struggle for me to be like no this is we we go here first and for people to be like no we're going here and just it would it would be a struggle not it's, that I would never do it that's yeah. very I, feel like I would not here's hear me out I I'm not saying we wouldn't ever do it. I feel like you'd rather. But it would. I'd rather go somewhere Disney. else. Let's go to Universal. I'd rather go somewhere else and hang out and do things and just be free flowing and be rad. Or like, hey, let's do that. But I've got so much like Disney ties and all sorts of stuff to be like. It would be hard for me to break away from that. I know that I would just struggle with it. <coughs> so. I feel like you'd rather I, do. Cost I, you I feel like you'd rather do. The day and it's expensive, trip. so there's and that too. You like also need more than. It's like than... an eighty twenty five trip. It's still like, I, they're <laughs> much more coordinated than all the teams together. Yeah, but then. Uh, but the it, thing it, is, is there wouldn't be a whole lot of people going. There'd, yeah. like, there'd probably be like six, seven people going. But that would it be fun? Yes, but then it's also okay, just dealing. Six, seven people. It just wouldn't be fun. For I feel terrible that I that I I feel really bad that I've said like. You guys would ruin it. Would there be some that I would struggle with yeah. in years past? Yes. Now, would I take y you guys? Yeah, we can have fun. But there have been some in years past from like, no, no, no gracias. <laughs> You're not. No, Disney's my memories. That's my place. If you want to go, you go on your own. You, you guys can go anywhere else, but I'm not taking you there. So. Yes, transparent. But that's that. Is, that has always been my reason. We just do. That makes, that makes sense. For sure. I want to go on. I, so, I want to go on a drop and run with you sometime. That sounds fun. Like something like Tower of Terror. Dollywood. Dude, I Tower of Terror is great. I have no problem with that. I just got a problem with like seeing everything, like being that high and then dropping. Uh, 
Tower of Terror, you just go up and then Dropping there's no big deal. Rides that don't have to you know what? There's that the again. The reason I don't like dropping rides is that I don't have something to put my feet on. If I don't have something to put my feet on, I don't like the ride. Caleb drops. Like I would, Ryan doesn't drop. I love if y'all were to drop. I would probably. I drop. loved the Guardians thing, but I liked it because well, first off, I had an old crap handle, but also I could put, I I could put my feet on the ground. They weren't just dangling. If they were dangling, no, there's no way I'm ever doing that. November, certain date. I'm going to have to get Will to go. I'll, I'll see you. if I'll, I'll, see I'll if tell I'll you when we hit stop. All right. So, back to prayer request. So, we got first ever marching, cross country, work <laughs> stuff. <laughs> that things would function correctly at work. There we go. Hey, you and Caleb both are chicken farmers now. Caleb and I are now. Oh, dude, chicken I'm a chicken tender, tender now. <laughs> oh, only, yeah! Only chicken. one more, then we can make a meal. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Hey, look, what, what if kids one day, right dude? One I'm day not the only chicken tender right anymore. Here. Caleb has way more chickens than me, but you're not the Caleb only I, I'm one, not one anymore. Not we'll have we'll have a Caleb's not the only one anymore. Oh. We all bring stuff that we have, like this that we've all grown. Or, uh, I don't. That'd be anything. sick. We just need a I've potato corn, then we have a meal. Caleb's brought his chickens before hey, for hey, our hey, Christmas. Hey, eggs. We got eggs. hey the, the only thing I can grow is mold. <laughs> That's <laughs> gross. <laughs> eggs. We can make a salad. I think Jacob just admitted to growing tobacco in his backyard. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Yeah. What'd you say to grow? <laughs> <laughs> you say plants? plants. We have two chickens. It could have been like I grow, I grow. I grow. I grow plant. I grow plant. You can just like. Totally. My name's, my name's Roger Farmstead, and I farm plant. And I farm plant. <laughs> Shout out Blake Arnold. You need to be on this pod. It'd be fun. It'd be listen, man. We need to get Blake in the pod. Anyways, so workload. Josh? <laughs> Rare request? Pretty good? Okay. Okay. First robotics meeting. There we go. Uh, we've got... I think I've talked about it. Like, just drop. Recharge. It's our Wednesday night here, so... All the fun on Wednesday in the middle of a new series, or at the, the start of a new series, which is going to be really fun. Talking about leadership, and I'm just excited about it. So, cool deal. Anyone want to close us out tonight? I will pray. And, uh, and then, then we'll close out. So, let's do it. God, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for Movement Monday, Episode 9, uh, Part 2 of Waiting. Uh, maybe there have been some people that have been waiting for Part 2, so here it is, and it's just uh, a continuation of Episode 8, and we're just so excited. Um, God, prepare our hearts for Episode 10 as we are, are two handfuls in, and we're just excited about it. God, we lift up Nathan with uh, uh, for first time marching. We're just excited about him, uh, relieve his nerves, prepare his heart and, and his mind for, uh, excuse me, for all the music and, and for the show and everything. He's just going to be awesome. He's going to do a great job. And then for Jacob with his first cross country, give him the strength and the stamina to keep on going, help him run 100 miles an hour. It'd be awesome. And then for Caleb and just workload and uh, just that things would would ease down communication would uh would help out and uh just all good things that would prosper from that and then for all the fun things with with starting school and josh with robotics and uh, all of our guys starting school back and then uh for our midweek this wednesday and, and what you're going to do and we're just excited we're just talking about leadership and and all the funds and uh thank you for my one egg that uh one of my chickens laid today. We're just excited. So all the fun things. Now I'm a chicken tender like Caleb, and it's exciting. So God, we thank you and praise you for you the God of our lives. And everyone's it. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to episode eight of Movement Monday podcast. podcast. Super awesome, Josh. You want to close us out since this is your pod tonight? Uh-huh. Close us out. Oh, bye, peoples. Yeah. See you. Bye, guys. <laughs>